Hey guys, Ajax22 here, and today I wanted to share with you one of my personal little favorites. This is a Sour and Sons model 1913, second variant, um, and it's kind of cool. This is actually um, one of the, the ones with the checkered little thumb lever. Um, it also has a uh, the safety marking underneath it. And uh, being serial number 33100, it's, it's one of the latest uh, second models that's actually been uh, documented. Um, the last uh, highest number one I saw was uh, 28 uh, something. So it's, it's pretty, pretty cool. These are really unique guns. They occupy a place in history that's um, back when everybody was still trying to figure everything out. Um, you know, it was it was made in uh, in Prussia in Seoul. It's 32 automatic, um, very unique design. Uh, it's a blowback. It has the spring around the barrel. Um, it has very unique controls. Um, this up here, that you you know you have to put your finger into the trigger guard to operate, is actually the slide lock. So if you want to lock the slide back, you put your finger and push up, pull the slide back and then it uh, it locks open. Uh, to drop the slide subsequently, you pull the trigger <laughs> and the slide drops uh, and then you pull the trigger again and it goes off. It's, it's a very interesting system. Um, for disassembly, uh, you actually push down on the rear sight and, it, and then, you, then you turn and unscrew the, uh, the rear portion of this cap. Um, and uh, you know it all it all drops out the back it has a uh, the second version is when they first uh, the second version that's not non uh, that's not transitional is the first version had a, a button for magazine release this they switched to a heel pinch and pull um, on these it's a pretty crude magazine but um, you know actually reminds me a lot of like the Astras and the the various um, you know Spanish specials back in back in the day but it works. Um, no, no hold open on the last round. Uh, but with a system as simple as that, um, you know, it's it's really straightforward. Um, it's kind of an interesting interesting design. I was actually thinking about switching out the uh, the barrel, it, uh, threading it out of the breech block, and uh, putting a longer one in, just for uh, for giggles. But um, it, it's a quite a unique pocket pistol. There's not a lot of uh, it's all it's all machined, but it has a sheet metal like construction. The upper is a is a tube. Reminds me of uh, a number of the the you know tube gun, except that it's, it's very clearly machined um, into a tube. It's not stamped. It's not forged um, although it does have a little pressing right here of a dude with a club uh, who was the mascot of the of the company um, yeah let me uh, let me show you another cool feature about this but it's gonna require me to have both hands so back in just a sec all right I've just racked the slide and put my finger on the upper part of the trigger so that we could um, properly operate this. You'll note there's a notch in the back that index, uh, that indexes the rear sight in the correct uh, position. That's important actually uh, to making these function. Because um, as you see, when you pull the trigger the first time, it drops the slide, then you release it, and now it drops the firing pin. It's striker fired um, and a very interesting setup. But um, now let me, I'm going to push this down and rotate it just a quarter of a turn, you can do a quarter of a turn, half of a turn, just get it out of the notch, as you can see. Uh, now I'm going to do it again, and I'll show you how it uh, affects function. Alright, still a quarter of a turn, we just racked it, put the, the slide and slide lock, pull the trigger, okay, release, pull the trigger again. Now you notice that there was no click. I'm holding the trigger down, and with it out of position, it now has a very positive, um, well, it's, it's a dead man switch, basically. So in the event that you have somebody you need to, you know, hold a, hold a gun to their head and not be uh, 
in a situation where it behooves them to uh, squirm too much or in any way assault you, this, this actually um, releases the second you release the pressure. Like that. So, um, yeah, I'm not going to do that. One thing about these guns is they bite like a real son of a bitch. You'll pardon the, the language. Um, you think hammer bite's bad? This thing has a hollow um, bottom side with a, a pretty sharp edge to it with a sphere with a round cap that if you get your your the web of your hand in there manipulating it one-handed um, absentmindedly in front of the television it will give you the world's worst blood blister um, don't do it pause the pause the recording and it uh, yeah just just don't do it. it it hurts a lot ask me how I know okay yeah as you can see, you get your uh, meat of your, your finger in that, and uh, wow, it just it just sucks. Uh, but yeah, that's that's actually how I, I bought this gun for uh, sixty dollars. Um, it was brought into a local gun store that uh, didn't want it. It was uh, you know considered unsafe to fire. Um, the, the lack of the, the trigger release was noticed right away, but it wasn't noticed that the uh, the cap needed to be properly indexed first. So um, so sixty bucks, and you've got yourself a little awesome awesome gun. I mean, it, it looks old, it looks beat up, but these were really well made back in the day. The machine work is is quite nice. The fitting, the finish, uh, even the the tuning of the sears are are, are pretty decent for what they are. Um, yeah, um, and that, that, uh, the whole dead man, I've never seen a, a, a production gun that had that as a, a feature. Um, yeah, it, uh, it's pretty cool, but for disassembly, you know, once you've got that cat, that, the, the rear sight depressed, you simply unscrew the, uh, this is gonna probably spring apart, make a big mess when I do it. Yep, all the way across and on the laptop. Fun! <sighs> that said, very well made. You can uh, reliably throw this across the room several times without a significant incident. Um, Little striker spring goes there. You know, all of these components are serialized. Um, this is 33100, and as you can see, um, you know, 100 on that. Um, they only had room for two on this, but um, you know, it's just you just gotta appreciate workmanship when they do when they put it into the gun. You know, and they they actually take the time to. Uh, you know, number each one, and these are just these are just really cool. But yeah, that's the rear sight slash, you know, cap locking system. Um, they must have done a tremendous amount of hand fitting on these guns to make them function this well. Um, you know, but I mean, it was a 1913 gun. Chances are, they uh, you know, the spring probably needs to be rebent a little bit. Uh, works all right as is though, so I'm not going to touch it. Um, yeah, I love these things. Yeah, there it is, 100. Every component. You'll not even notice that like the springs, when they bent the, the wire around, they flattened it and ground it to make it a cleaner piece. Which I always appreciate um, in vintage guns like that. That to me says that every craftsman involved in the process just had pride of, of workmanship. A few interesting things. Um, I don't know if this is intentional on this this particular gun, but you see how the uh, the machine cut on that centerpiece actually went through. Um, there's daylight visible there, and I don't believe that serves any particular purpose. It might have, it might have worn through. It might have, you know, it doesn't affect function. Doesn't affect safety. Um, and theoretically, it doesn't affect safety. 
in actuality it might, but I don't think the 32 ACP is a powerful enough cartridge to really be overly concerned about. Um, you know, mostly supported uh, uh, breech face. I, I don't know what the top is for. I think it's to aid in feeding or to prevent the uh, the round from kicking up um, and stove piping. Um, these, these guns had a pretty good reputation for reliability. Um, and the machine work is really quite good. There's another location for the serial. Even though that piece does not, uh, it's still integral to the frame. Yeah. You can see that the, uh, designed to catch the, the, the magazines probably aren't the most reliable, but the design allows for the magazines to not be that reliable. It can stovepipe up into that, and then between the, uh, the angled piece on top that catches it and drives it, and the, uh, you know, the upper feed ramp, for lack of a better word, you have a pretty reliable system. Uh, another thing to note is that this isn't just a solid block. Uh, they actually counterboard it so that the spring slides into it. This, this is just threaded in. Um, I think it might be pinned, but I'm not 100% sure. Um, I didn't see any clear evidence of, of pinning. Um, it's just it's just a clean piece of workmanship. Uh, this back here is what the actual release on the sear, and you'll notice it, it pushes up to, uh, to reset. And then it, you pull the trigger, it goes down. Goes back, resets. Um, you know, that's something to be aware of is that in the event that you actually did wear this down excessively, uh, or in in some way link the link this so that it didn't click past the point, there's a there's just a, a notch in there. If that got worn, this would probably run full auto. Um, So that's, you know, something to be concerned about. Uh, also, like if, if there was a, just a bolt or so, any, any sort of obstruction that got this fixed forward, um, because of the way that, the, that this system operates with the, the slide, um, if it got locked in the forward position or gummed up or, or fixed in any way, or if this broke off and got wedged into it. I mean, there's a, a number of many malfunctions on this handgun where you could um, pull the trigger and, and send, you know, all six rounds, seven rounds um, downrange, which I'm, I'm sure happened at some point, but, you know, the, the, the fix for that seems to be just that the quality of workmanship... I mean, this gun has been road hard and put away wet. Um, as I'm sure you noticed, the, the finish on it is, you know, been around the block. It's, you know, probably production from before 1919. Um, you know, might have been in the muds of... of it, it's not the export model. It doesn't have the um, Sewell Prussia markings. It just says Sewell, which means... Um, there's a there's a real chance that it was um, you know a, a bring back. There's no importer markings. It's it's probably came out of somebody's pocket in uh, World War One, um, or you know in the subsequent decade got got drugged back with a pile of guns uh, somehow. Um, so it's 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 had a hard life. Um, it's held up remarkably well. A uh, little chip out of the grips. I mean, if you know, I make it to uh, 103 years old, which would be nice, and I only have a little bit of pitting and uh, a chip on my grips. Uh, I'd consider that to be a win. Um, but yeah, just. Uh, an amazing piece of hardware that I uh, want you guys to know about because if you ever come across one, they are really cool. And the whole, you know, dead man switch thing 
it's really dangerous. I wouldn't recommend inducing that with a, with a round in the chamber unless you are in a very specific set of circumstances that are controlled and safe. And cause there really is no way to undo that. Um, once you pull that trigger, that round is going to go off. Um, you know, you, you, uh, you can't, uh, inhibit function at that point. Um, you might be able to pull the slide back. Um, but I've had mixed results. So yeah, cool little toy, kind of unusual. And, uh, that little, little dead man switch is kind of awesome. Um, yeah, this is just a really cool piece of hardware. You don't see them done like this. That's the, uh, that's the slide lock catch that when you ratchet it back, it, uh, it catches on the, on the front lip right there. Really out of the box thinking, but this was before anybody had any standardization. I knew what a pocket pistol was supposed to be, so they just sort of said, well, this is what I think a pocket pistol is. Um, yeah. Anyway, one of my personal favorites in, um, and I hope nobody hates on it, but, uh, my, my personal favorite caliber, the 32, a, uh, 32 automatic, um, 7.65, or, or no, sorry, 7.35, 7.65, that's right. Um, it's a good gun, good caliber, good overall, uh, construction, and, uh, you know, when they turn up at your local store for 60 bucks, they are a hell of a deal. Uh, I, I don't know that I would be able to find another one at that price, but uh, keep your eyes open. Uh, if you see one of these, add it to your collection. Um, they're, they're unique, and they're fun, and uh, yeah, no reason not to. All right, have a good one, guys.